Behind me is the gnarliest building site I've ever taken on. The building platform up there is 17 meters above the road there. If you haven't seen this on the channel, check out our first video. All the way up the top of the section, we are building a 245 square meter home. This one is four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a study, large garage downstairs. Look at this dig out, isn't it a thing of beauty? Right now we're marking out for the footing. Just down here is forming the front edge of the driveway and there's a two meter high retaining wall. Next step here is we're gonna drill some big holes. Follow along as we wrestle with failing retaining walls that got installed 20 years ago, not to spec. Wet weather slips. We've had to get 3,000 meters of steel up there, 64 cubes of concrete, but we're making progress bit by bit. I'm Josh, a builder here in New Zealand, and this is my gnarly building site. We've had major access issues and today we just finished pouring 24 holes for these huge 300mm retaining posts. Half of them have had to be drilled into rock. It's literally been two steps forward, one step back, and it's such a sweet milestone to have these installed, signed off by the engineer, ready for our retaining boards to come in. So on this site plan here, you can see this is where we're building it. So this detail here shows the retaining wall we're building. Using table 4.0, we order all of these ECD posts. These show us that they're going in a 600 mil hole, how far down they need to go, and how long the post is allowed to be. So if we're retaining two meters, we need to have a embedment depth of 2.9, so therefore we need to use a 4.9 meter post. We can use an ECD 275 to 300 mil post. Look at them, they are literally like telephone poles. 2.2 meters into the ground, they come out two meters and retain a bunch of soil. And then they come up another meter and that acts as a car barrier and we put a balustrade on top of that. Basically it's gonna stop any vehicle going over the cliff. This also shows you that the wall is on a 10 to 1 angle. That's a 6 degree slope. Real important that you have that slope. And this is part of why the wall on the neighbor's property is failing because whoever built it back in the day did it plumb. And then the force of the earth pushes it over. We're not going to have that problem here. This was my first priority job, but real early on we established the existing wall over there is failing. Basically sometime between 2005 and 2011, the wall got built. It wasn't on the neighbor's 2005 consent, and then it magically appeared on the 2011 consent. So it's been a bit of a show dealing with that and the engineer. Originally this wall we were building was gonna to have to wrap around and carry on and replace that. We've come up with what's called a dead man solution where on this side of the property, seven meters away from the wall, we drill some huge holes, we fill them with concrete and these posts, and we put a huge big strap back to the wall and we crank it up and we tie it all together. So bit by bit, we are resolving our access issues. As well as building this retaining wall, we are also trying to build up our subs. If you haven't already, go ahead, click subscribe, help us crack 100K. End of this week here, they're gonna cut this and the gradient of this area will be way more mellow. And it's gonna be five meters wide. Huge room for activities up here. And then we're gonna move into this section here and we're gonna do the dead man. And then we can finally get our last bit of access up to the slab. That's right, between the last video and this one, even without access, 
we have managed to pour a slab up the top. We have a massive 37 meter reach concrete pump. Basement garage is going down. It is a massive achievement to get it down. We've even got blocks to 1.8 meters, half high. Let's go and have a look at that. Look at this, I'm standing on a 70 square meter slab. Remember last time we were here and this was just a big giant cutout? A few of you called me out on the gradient. So we spoke to the engineer and he gave us a better angle and so we cut that back. We've also covered it in a special cloth that is theoretically stopping it from eroding. So we've put in here 3,000 meters of steel, that's 3Ks. That would be the length of 32 football fields for you Americans uh, laid out in steel. This kind of stuff, most of it's like D16, D20, D25 and we have got all of our blocks up here and we are good to go. So our building yard is just around the corner over there, it's like a five minute drive. We decided that with this being a muddy wet slope and we didn't have a flat clean area to work on yet that for stage one of the steel work we set up a cutting station in the yard at work. We created a cut list and now you can use factories to do that for you. In my experience when you've got a really complicated job it's easier to do it bit by bit and start to get a feel for how it's all going together. And there's nothing worse than getting a pre-order of steel turn up and you find out that all your runs have been bent 100 mils short or it's happened to me a couple of times now. We went to start the steel last night and realized that they had sent all the wrong steel. They look a little bit shorter than normal and so I measured them and sure enough the factory docket that they sent out has the right measurement but they sent them out to the wrong height. And I've learned the hard way to just bend my own steel on an as needed basis and it's just another little trick I've learned to keep a project moving. It's also a real good way for to start getting your head around how all the steel is going to go together on site. You create the cut list, you cut the steel, you place the steel, you pour the concrete, jobs are goldy. Uh, I think we've had the engineer up here about four times now. We've tested the soil, we've shown him the cutouts, we've shown him the steel, and now he's come back and he's checked the block work, and it has the tick of approval to pour concrete tomorrow morning. Again, bit by bit it's happening, and we are really starting to get a feel for how the site's coming together. Here you can see how much steel we're dealing with. Not only do we have the normal starters for the block wall, but we have all of this junky stuff here in the pilaster. And you'll see in the engineering detail that it goes all the way down, all the way across, and there's a huge footing there that holds this up and stops it tipping over on itself. Here's a detail of the block wall footing we have built. On the plans, different retaining walls are marked as retaining wall C or F, and on retaining wall C and footing a, this cage here needs to be 450 deep. That is actually a huge footing, but imagine that is a big anchor that then serves as holding this wall up and stops it toppling this way. We have starters going up and then we've got blocks and as you've seen on site, we are nine blocks high. So this is what's called half high. So the engineers passed this off, we're gonna do a port. Don't get me wrong, I have lost some sleep on this job and it's definitely been a complex process to deal with the access and the failing retaining wall and the neighbor and the engineer. And I think that's a really important thing is like real early on we're like, right, pause, slow down, make sure we talk to everyone, make sure we gather our facts. Because I'm the builder following the plans that people way smarter than me have drawn up and designed. What's really cool is our engineer has been uh, really good to work with and we've brought him up here, we've shown him some of the struggles we've been working with in terms of making his drawings work. So he's managed to recalculate some of the stuff 
and come up with practical solutions. I think that's really important as well, you've got to have someone that is on the same page as you. Here I am on the back side, we're going to go around and we're going to um, knock off all the high sides. Using a grinder we'll put an arras on here and then this all gets painted up and then it gets primed and then it gets layered with a waterproof seal. We're using an Artex product and then we can start backfilling this area because above us is where the rest of the house is going to go. We had a couple of little slips in here and so again two steps forward one step back you come to work you've just done all this work putting a footing in and then you have to spend ages clearing out the film we've come up with a few little ideas like this temporary board system to try and separate our work area from the little bits and pieces that are coming down the hill so one of the footings that way is there and then one of the footings this way is there so we actually only really have a tiny little slab in there i think we ended up using about seven rib raft pods you can see that on this engineer detail here and honestly this thing is engineered for africa i just need to hurry up and backfill it so i can sleep at night knowing that there is a ton of steel in there knowing that there is an approved layer of fill and knowing that this hill and this house is not going to go anywhere. If you haven't already, go ahead, click subscribe and follow along. Not only in this build, we've got another couple of builds on the go and we love showing you guys the process start to finish.